Welcome back to another edition of Solved. Today we have a 2007 BMW 328i. And we're going to be doing the oil filter housing gasket. These are very well known for their leaks. One of the biggest problems with this motor. And then we're going to do a set of six ignition coils. As you see here, I've already removed the airflow housing, which is... T20. That's the one that's missing right there. And next we're going to be, this is a E10. That's the size right there, but you won't be able to get it down here. And although I saw other videos, I did not hear anybody mentioning that it is 22 nanometers or 16 foot pounds of torque to reassemble this one. One that we're going to discover how fun it is to get down there. And then you have this third one right here. This is your gasket that we got from Advanced Auto Parts. There's your part number there if you want to take a screenshot. And now we're going to remove the oil filter cup so that the oil can drain down. While that's doing that, we're going to go underneath. I would suggest jacking it up by the frame. Don't forget, you gotta chalk the rear wheel. Oh, you can't see it, but the wheel is chalked. And right there is your drain. Let's go do that. Okay, so we got that drain in here. Had to use a big old flathead screwdriver, 3 8 Here's your petcock or drain plug. Make sure you come over here and you don't have to take off the coolant reservoir cap, just loosen it up. And of course, you can hear the music happening right there. Then grab yourself a pair of oil filter pliers. Loosen that up. And you don't even have to take this all the way off because you just want to get air a little bit loose there. Not air, but you want to get a little loose so that the oil will drain down back into the engine. Good time to check the oil filter. Good time to do an oil change if you need it, but we didn't do it too long ago, so we're going to leave that. The oil's draining down. Next, we're going to work on the E10. So before I go ahead and take that off, you can take a look at the two differences. On the left is an 8mm quarter inch drive socket. On the right is an E10. You see the star pattern. Now, when we put this on here, obviously that's designed specifically for that. Because I don't have a short one, the 8mm is very tight. So this is kind of like a backup, last resort. But, if you're not going to take off this hose, then you'll want to use the shorty. With either a wobble or a swivel, which we have already set up here, which we're going to be tricking out going down there and a nice long quarter inch drive ratchet. So we're gonna give it a crack. All right, nice and easy. And of course, they recommend replacing these three bolts. I called BMW, they didn't have it in stock. Uh, so we ordered them and they're on their way from a different location. I think it was around 10 or $15, very inexpensive. They're aluminum bolts, so over time they do stretch. They do not recommend reusing them, but if you don't have any, you got to make do with what you got. Okay, so you can get an idea. Now I'm working on this E10 down there. Let's see if we can get a little light on there. A little hard to see. I know I'm outdoors. Okay, you can see it right there. I wound up going with the 8mm quarter inch drive socket with a universal on a 6 inch quarter inch drive wobble sock uh, extension because the E10 would not fit down there. There's just not enough room for it to grab enough teeth. Let's get some. Okay, let's see here, one-handed. Easy. Okay, before I completely take this out, I just wanna make a little note here. The one that's the most difficult is the medium length bolt. This is the longest bolt, and this is the shortest bolt, which we'll display once we have them all out. And make sure you do not drop this unless you got a really good pair of eyes and magnet. So I had to switch hands here. So 
what I did was I put my right hand through here. As you can see, these banana hands don't really fit. Very tight spaces. And I'm going to go fish it out with my finger. Hang on once. Okay, so here are, that's the 12 o'clock position bolt right here. That is the back bolt that goes down there. And I'm going to rescind what I said a moment ago. The magnet's not going to help you unless you drop your socket. These are aluminum bolts, as I mentioned. So, being that it's not uh, in the meteorology chart that magnets will pick up, that ain't going to work unless you come up with an aluminum magnet. So, instead of using the socket down here, I wanted to give you a third option. You have the E10, you have the quarter inch drive, eight millimeter, or you can use an eight millimeter wrench. I happen to have a box ratcheting wrench. And that's another way that's a little easier to get to here as far as access. Just give it a little turn and you're on your way. And if you can't get your fingers on there, like I can't, you can get the eight millimeter on there and just gently finger it out after it becomes loose enough. And now I can take the rest out by hand. And I'll show you the trick that I did that may help you. I couldn't record it because it required both of my hands being used. And there it is. So you can see the graduating sizes, front, top, back. So what I was doing is I had the ratchet with the left hand here and then my right index finger was holding the tip of the bolt here to keep it from, uh, so that the <clears throat> ratchet could do its job. A non-ratcheting wrench, obviously you would have to take it off and start all over and that's just a pain. Uh, before I forget, obviously you wanna take care of your sensors here. There's one here and I believe there's one over here. So we'll get those off and I expect this gasket to look pretty gnarly. The oil problem that we have is, well, let me see if we can see down there, how to switch hands. In this case, it'd be easier just to film it this way. And you take your one of your fingers, the push pin is underneath there. You can see it moving and just pull it off. And that's your clip right there. So with the finger, you just push and pull. Not by the wire, always by the housing. And in this case, you can see, hopefully, yeah, we got a mess of oil down there. Well, let's clean it up. So just take a little note here. I see a little bit of corrosion. I guess the antifreeze must have been sleeping on that for a while. Ah, right in the sun. Let's see if we can get a better bird's eye view. It's really not that bad. This is a decently clean setup here, considering the leak. And we're going to clean all this up. All this right here, that's not a bird's nest or a rat nest. That is what's left over from the belt. One indicator that we knew that this was leaking is because, and it happens all the time, the fluid, coolant, oil, or both, leaks off to the side and goes down in the belt. Slips, tears, and then breaks or shreds in this condition. Uh, this case, rather, sorry. So we got... You gotta dig it all out of the alternator. It's important that you get as much as you can because what happens is you can get your low oil pressure light on and then that can make the engine behave improperly and then you got uh, big problems. So we wanna avoid all that by cleaning it up. Uh, vacuum, if you got an air blower, get in there. Make sure you get as much as you can. Now's the time to do it because you got the greatest access possible. Okay, let's get to cleaning this up and then I'm gonna remove this gasket as well. You got yourself a little handy dandy pick. So here is the culprit right here. We have your brand new gasket here. I was able to fortunately fish this out in one piece. And right there is the culprit. We're gonna condemn the coolant chamber. And we got a little bit of oil that came out as well. More than likely because, fortunately it didn't mix in the engine. That's something also you wanna watch out for because on these engines, you do not have an oil dipstick. All you have is a digital reed. So you gotta make sure that it's good. That's why for good measure, if it's been going on for a while, just change your oil. Let's see here, this looks, flip this over right here, get another bird's eye view of what we're looking at. 
Yeah, that looks pretty torn up. All right, we're going to clean this up now here. We're going to clean that up down there, and we'll get her back together. Now, I don't expect you to have something like this, but we're using a Milwaukee tool with this type of scrubber. It's a nice gentle one for aluminum. And you just get in there and nice low speed. No pressure. We don't push on it at all. Be gentle on the trigger. You do the best job you can without pushing too hard. Once all the residue and tiny particles, again, fortunately, my gasket came out nice and smooth. A lot of times they're hard and they break into a ton of pieces. So very important, nothing falls down there. This is your coolant chamber, oils, the rest of it. And you want to make sure that nothing goes down there. Otherwise, you have different problems, which we don't want to invite anymore. So we're going to go ahead and put that gasket. And there it is. Gasket's on. Only goes on one way. Do a nice little press fit. Make sure it's nice fitting perfectly in there that looks good and we're going to reassemble i almost forgot to show you that we prepared the surface now it's nice and clean and flat no abrasive and once again always easier to start at 12 o'clock and just finger thread it in just line it up go to the bottom might need two hands on this it looks like we caught it and of course, the fun one will be in the back, which we'll get to. That's going to need two hands. Just another quick note here. Um, I did forget to mention one last time about the bolt sizing. So this small bolt here goes right there. The long one goes up top, and then the medium goes down there. And what I would recommend is that while you have it out, because it'll save you a lot of time, just place it through there and gently place it, lay it down without losing the bolt. And now it's at least in the hole because a moment ago when I started putting this one and that one, I found it a little more difficult to put the bolt in through there. So we're going to try and do it this way. It makes more sense. And of course, it makes more sense again. Take off the oil filter. Place it to the side. You have a little more access if you have big hands. So I'm going to need the second hand here. Okay. I can start it by finger in here, get it threaded down, and then we'll use the socket. Okay, so we got it on there. All right? And we're not going to go all the way because we have to use a torque wrench. But just to show you, that's that one there. And this fits on there just the same. Isn't it awesome? You're working on a car, you got the hood up. Everybody with a uh, fancy exhaust just got it right by you. Okay, and we're going to get the last one with the wrench. Okay, so here is the torque wrench that we used. A little tiny one, 3 8 drive with a quarter inch adapter. Now you got to remember... When you have an extension, six inch plus a swivel, uh, plus an adapter, uh, 16 foot pounds, you might wanna use it up to 17 because you have a loss of torque all that length. Much like your drivetrain. Your engine may have 500 horsepower, but you only have 400 at the wheels, for example, because you lose some as it travels down. And then, of course, we did this one here and this one here. All 16 foot-pounds, just over 16 foot-pounds. 22 nanometers is the measurement. I'm going to have all this uh, in the bio description. The push-pin clip goes upside down. All right. That looks good there. Now we'll get the oil filter back in. Reassembly of the hose, fill it up with coolant, and then we're going to move on to the coils, which will be in a different video. I want to thank you very much for sticking with this uh, longer than usual video. I want it to be going a little slower, a little descriptive for you. Uh, any questions or comments, please communicate with us. We're happy to respond. Uh, give us a little time. We're not always on top of uh, checking it every day, but every other day or two days, we usually go and get it done. 
Uh, other opportunities, you can check your air filter housing, uh, your air filter if you take the housing off, if you decide to go that way, if you take your hoses off. Again, these are options. Want to make sure that whatever happens <clears throat> when it comes to, as I mentioned before, the fraying of the belt, these two sensors right here, you do not want to have that belt snap them off because if they snap off, easy to replace, but yeah, you'll know that it's been snapped off because the engine will just not run right. You see there's lots of residue. We're going to foamy engine bright this and clean it all off. That won't be in the video, but there's your cooler down there, nice and clear. And thank you for watching this episode of Solved. We have the 2007 BMW 328i. We did the oil filter housing gasket and a couple extra tidbits of information we added there. You got the part number. I'm going to put in the description all the tools we needed. And uh, thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Be safe.